Welcome to the NASA webinar series, providing you with timely information and training each month on topics of interest. This is Brendan Burnett, Director of Professional Development and Education Programs. This month we are presenting Values Discovery Process. With me today is Simon Riley of Leading Advisor. Simon is a NAFA national and state conference speaker, an MDRT and TEDx talk speaker, and an expert financial advisor and coach. Today, Simon will show you how to create more sales, engage in focused action, and develop a bigger vision and plan in hours versus decades through the values discovery process. During the presentation, and during the question and answer session, you may type questions in the question box on the right side of your screen. Questions will be answered during the session, excuse me, at the end of the session during the question and answer period. You will also be prompted to respond to polls during the program. If we choose to launch a polling question, this will appear on your screen. So let's begin. Simon, I'll turn the discussion to you. Thank you, Brendan, and thank you very much to NAFA, and welcome to the values discovery process. I want to lead off by saying that 10% of your success is about how and what to do, and 90% of it is about why you're doing what you're doing. And so I contend that you already know how and what to do. You already know how to do a business plan. You already know about time management. You already know about delegation. And my, my question is, why, isn't, why aren't these tools being impl implemented to their full capacity? So this presentation is about expanding your understanding about why you're not capitalizing use the tools that you've got in respect to being able to build your business and, and uh, service your clients. So this is about understanding how to create more sales. You're going to create more focused action going to create a bigger vision and plan versus hours and decades. My wish today is for you to be able to get an understanding to be able to go, that is why I am not following through on these things that I know that I should be doing. And one other offering before we get going, I'd like to offer you this understanding that most of the time it requires somebody from the outside to be able to help you to go to the next level. It's very, very difficult to be able to fix problems in isolation. So you're going to learn during this presentation three steps to understand, implement, and magnify your why. Five sales steps to help your prospects decide in a short period of time rather than multiples of appointments. Five focused action steps to get you out of overwhelm now. And this is timely because we've only got eight working weeks or so that are left until the end of the year. And now is the time. We've got to get clear. We've got to get out of overwhelm. And we've got to start laying the groundwork for our visions and goals for 2014 and beyond. So the next point, three questions to jumpstart your vision and goals for 2014. Help you understand why there's times when you're stuck and inconsistent and help you to develop a sustainable system for long-lasting success. So first, seek to understand. There's a lot of changes that are going on in this profession. You know, on your side of the border, I'm Canadian. I'm up in Toronto right now. And I attended an advocate's national symposium yesterday. Advocates is the Canadian Association of, of Financial Advisors. And so there's challenges going on. On your side of the border, you've got health care reform. I understand that recently that NEFA lobbied strong to absolutely ensure that a bill was not going to go through that would cause life insurance benefits to be a taxable benefit. So associations are very, very important. On this side of the border, the symposium was about disclosure. There's lobbying for, there's lobbying against disclosure, disclosure of commissions and disclosure of fee for service being demonstrated to clients on their statement. And this is off the back of what has already come into law in the United Kingdom 
in Australia. Australia. There's been a number of advisors that have lost the business on account of this. And at the same time, there are consumers that think that they don't need advisors for advice. And the truth is, advisors are required to be able to help their clients meet and exceed their goals because if, this, if the consumer is left on their own, the likelihood of them doing anything is potentially nil. So I'm saying, seek first to understand. You know, on this side of the border, there's all kinds of upset in relationship to this disclosure, and I see people really, really getting bent out of shape in a sense to resisting it, and they're fighting. But in the process, they are failing to understand the value of their business. They've got to first understand their own values. They've got to be able to pass that value on to their clients. One can understand value if they're resisting. If they're not understanding, there will be judgment. And when there's judgment, there's no understanding. If there's defense, if there's doubt, if there's fear, there's attack, then there can be no understanding. And this misunderstanding is what blocks us from taking our business to the next level. So I'm doing a little bit of a repeat here. 10% of success is about how and what to do. And again, you already know about vision, business plan, time management, team building, delegation. 90% is about why. Now, I did a survey with a group of advisors back in June. And I want to draw your attention to questions one and two. Take a look at question number one, I lack focus. And a question put to them is, where do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, 10 being high? So if you answer 10, do I lack focus? That means you would not have an awful lot of focus. Question two is, I follow a written five-year vision and business plan. Where do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? And by the way, I am going to be sending you or giving you the opportunity to be able to get detailed notes along with this survey, and it's free, and you're going to be able to get it for yourself. So the question posed number two was, I follow a written five-year vision and business plan. Where do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? And my message to you is the answer is one or there's 10. There is no four or five or six. That is just maybe. Having your vision and a business plan written on a restaurant napkin does not cut it. And we already know that we're supposed to put this in writing. I mean, you've heard the value of the power of the written word. But again, why isn't it happening? Take a look at question number seven. I feel completely overwhelmed doing the things I don't like to do. But more importantly, question number eight, I see the big vision, understand the time investment in change creates long-term benefit, and I'm aware of what I love to do, and I delegate everything else. You know, when I speak with prospective clients, I do an interview with them and I ask them what are some of the biggest challenges that they're facing and they're telling me about paperwork and they're stuck doing things that they don't like to do. But I find that there's a resistance to delegating. And as we go into this survey, drawing your attention to questions number 15 and 16, actually you can't see them. I'm putting it out there, really this is about why isn't this happening? But question number 16, it's, I'm getting many great qualified referrals. There's a fellow up here in Canada, his name is Art School. He has a company called The Personal Coach. He talked about a survey that he did with 100 advisors. He said, what's the best way to build your business? They resoundingly agreed that asking for referrals was the number one way. He asked the same group, how many of you are asking for referrals? 12. 12 out of 100. Why? Why is that going on? I'm going to answer that question today. I'm going to give you a scientific demonstration of why that's going on, and at the same time, I'm going to share with you what's new about it. So what I find, this is my experience that I developed over the last 30 years, and what I found is that most people do not know the difference between inspiration and motivation. Inspiration is to influence, to move, or to guide from within. That is the definition of it. Motivation, on the other hand, if you look in Webster's, it says to come from a place of fear, need, or desire. Think about that. When people say to themselves, well, you know, I've got to get motivated, 
Well, that means I want to come from a place of fear and need. Now, you might say desire. That sounds pretty good. Well, the Latin root word of desire is decidus. It means moving away from a star. You're already a star. What do you need to move away from? So we need to understand inspiration. We need to understand inspiration and understand that inspiration comes from values. Values are the DNA of your fulfillment. And fulfillment and values is what wakes you up in the morning and pulls you forward and helps with your inspiration. But here's the big piece that folks don't understand. They do not know the difference between a need and a value. Values drive positive beliefs and positive feelings. Unmet needs drive negative beliefs and negative emotions. And needs will dominate one's values and one's inspiration, causing a person to be inconsistent. They'll have a lot of ups and downs going on in their business. So this is interesting. Here we are. It's October 2013. And this time is, in a sense, synonymous. It connects with seven years ago. And I want you to think back seven years ago, September, October 2006, and what was going on right then and there. The dawn of the subprime mortgage crisis was hitting. And then a year later, it went from Wall Street to Main Street getting the flu. And it was financial Armageddon. And there was folks talking about that was the end of the world as we know it. And yes, there have been changes. But it's seven years later. It's almost like you've got to pinch yourself. It's seven years later since the subprime mortgage crisis, and yes, there's been ups and downs, but there are some people that are thriving. They have vision. They have inspiration, and I'm contending that that's because they know what their values are. Values are what creates sustainable success, and so my outcome today is to help you to understand this so that we suspend this motivation that's based on lack and unmet need because it's unsustainable we're stuck in a fog, we're trying to survive, and when there is an absence of understanding, there is judgment. Now, back in 2007, Spencer Johnson and Seth Godin both wrote a book. Seth Godin wrote The Dip. He said, any business is worth having is going to have a dip. So the notion is that there's going to be ups and downs. Seth says, you've got to understand the dip to be able to go through it. Spencer Johnson said it a different way, peaks and valleys. There's going to be valleys. There's going to be dark days ahead. But if you have a peak, if you have a vision, it is going to be able to pull you forward so that you can go through whatever you're going to be facing going forward. But you know, people resist having plans and vision. And when they don't have them written down, they get caught up in this. Is this all there is? And what am I doing this for? And another, another question then that follows that is what's wrong with me? And I guarantee you, if one is stuck in this area as far as asking these questions, they are going to get negative answers that are related to unmet needs and negative emotions and negative beliefs that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it will block one's inspiration and values going forward. So. I want to talk to you a little bit of my background. My background is when I was eight years old, that's when my misguided motivation started. When my mother came up to me and she said to me, I don't want to worry, you should have never come to Canada. We have a house paid for back there. We don't have enough money. There's not enough money for groceries. Your father's gone and done it again. He's not sold enough material. Now, my father was a great guy. He operated a salvage business. So he bought all kinds of things that were lumber, steel, that kind of thing, with the notion of being able to sell it. But the challenge is, you know, he bought more than he sold, and it made my mother very, very nervous. Now, they say in family systems theory that if the needs of a child don't get met, they're going to go to the next dominant person in the household, which have many needs. I don't want to worry yet. There's no money. There's no money for groceries. There's no money for Christmas. So in my mind, I had to go out and help my family. And so I used to go out with my dad in these trucks out on salvage operations. 
And in British Columbia, there's a there's the Fraser Canyon Highway. They finished the upgrade of it in 1963, and so my dad got the contract to be able to haul all of the steel that was left over after building bridges and whatnot. You know, one of the workers that was working with my father, he said to me, you know, he says, you know, this truck was junk before your father got it. So I was out there with him on a Sunday. The truck's overloaded. We're at the top of the hill. My father says to me, I don't want to worry you. He says, you know, the brakes on that this thing, they may not hold. He said, you better get on the running board in case you have to jump. And I think to myself, wait a second, we got no money? And now I have to turn around and jump? So I thought to myself, these people really need help. So I went outside of the family, started out with paper routes. I was 10 years old, had my first one like many of you. By the time I was 12, I had five paper routes. I was always working. The old timers in the, in the town said, you're going to make it. You've got what it takes. But it cost. It cost family. It cost friends. It cost education because I was always working. At the same time, I really never felt like I had enough. There was not enough recognition coming for what I was doing to be able to help my family. And frankly, my mother never felt safe enough. Now, is this about blaming my mother? No. It's about understanding. Now, I carried that work ethic into my adult life. Had plenty of ups, had plenty of downs in my career over, over the years. You know, in 1993, I lost my business, and it came as a major shock to everybody that knew me, because by that time, in my mind anyway, I had read every personal development book known to humankind. But the biggest shock to everybody that knew me at that particular time is that I co-owned the number one Anthony Robbins franchise in North America for sales of Tony's Unlimited Power video-based seminar. And I couldn't sustain the motivation. Now, am I judging Tony right now? Absolutely not. There was a piece of understanding that I had missing about myself that I needed to strengthen and deepen my understanding. And what I've done is I've dedicated the rest of my business life to be able to help my clients deepen their understanding of themselves so that they do not have to suffer through ups and downs in their business and frankly give their life up for their business. Here's what I've grown to understand. Again, most folks don't know the difference between inspiration and motivation. I've already explained it, but again, inspiration is to influence, move, or guide. Motivation is to come from a place of need, fear, and desire. Folks don't know the difference between values and unmet needs. Values drive positive beliefs, feelings, and emotions. And they're what drive your natural behaviors. On the other side of the coin, unmet needs drive negative emotions and negative beliefs and cause one to adapt their behaviors. And these things are unsustainable. And the one thing to understand about unmet needs is they will dominate values. There's an expression. Values are like turtles. They only come out when it's safe. Unmet needs will dominate one's values. Now, you might be saying, what are we doing here? I thought I was going to be attending a NAPA presentation, and this would be all about business. It is all about business. What are one of the biggest challenges that advisors are facing? Time management. So I'm going to take it back to this theory. The need of safety and security generates the negative emotion a fear and anxiety and the negative belief that I do not have enough time, I don't have enough energy to be able to build a vision and a plan for the next five years and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. With this going on, the person is in a sense in a state of urgency. There is never enough that they can do. They've always got too much to do. and they're unable to complete it. And so it has them caught up doing and doing and doing and doing. And, and in a sense, it's taking away their being because they can never seem to do enough to be able to get to where it is they want to go. Now, this theory comes from Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of unmet needs theory. 
you have five levels. Level one, physiological. A lot of you know this, but hear this for the first time in a different way. Level one, physiological needs. Hunger, thirst. Level two is safety. Level three is social. Level four is the steam. And level five is self-actualization. And what I'm saying is you need to be at level five to be extraordinary in this business. You know, there's that book out there called Good to Great. Well, you know what? Forget that. Everybody's great. You need to be extraordinary in your business today. You need to be self-actualized. But what's getting in the way? Well, I've already explained to you. The need of safety. The need of safety, level two. Advisors are stuck down here in levels two and three, and they can't get to the next level. And so we've already talked about the need of safety is going to get in the way in respect to one's time management. That need of safety is going to get in the way in respect to writing a vision and a business plan for the next five years because, again, the need is fueling negative emotions of anxiety and fear and the belief systems is I don't have enough time. And so one's not going to get it done. Level three is social. Now, we are in the people business. Here's an interesting demonstration where a value can also get confused with an unmet need. I talked about referrals earlier being an opportunity. It's an extraordinary opportunity, but advisors not being not taking advantage of it. And so what I am con contending here is that the need of recognition and approval is generating the negative emotions of anxiety and fear, and it's the belief. If I was to ask somebody for a referral, I might very well make a mistake. My goodness, I might get the referral, I might make a mistake with the referral. The referral is going to go back, and they're going to tell the client that I'm currently working with, I'm going to lose the referral, I'm going to lose the client. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, and the advisor brings themselves right back here to level two. Another issue is delegation. Delegation. We can't be doing $25 an hour work. Our job is to get out there and see the people. Forgive me. Jumped ahead there. Our job is to get out there and see the people. And so what stops us from delegating? It's the need of control and the negative emotions that are tied to it. And the belief is that nobody can do the job as well as I can. You know what? And people, they make mistakes. And with that attitude, one is not going to be able to delegate. And even if they get the personal power together to be able to go and hire an assistant, what they're going to do is going to attract an assistant that is tied into the self-fulfilling prophecy that no one can do the job properly. And so you're going to wind up having negative results. Now, I talk about level five. Who is the self? And you notice I'm talking of the notion here about being. Who is the self? Well, in a sense, who is the being? You know, people of faith, they use a different word. They use the word soul. And I offer you this, that you are not a body. You're not your mind. You are something far more infinite than this, the amygdala the limbic brain, the emotional mind. Seth Godin calls it the lizard mind. It is about the size of an almond. And it has the mentality of a three-year-old. And it is where these needs and these negative emotions and these negative beliefs reside. And we have just fallen prey to it and have been paying far too much attention to something that was made up. It is a perception. It frankly does not exist. The self, the being, or the soul was created. The amygdala, along with the needs, and all the negative emotions and negative beliefs were made up. And so understanding this gives us the inner strength to be able to do something different, to be able to make different choices to be able to go forward in our business. So I talked about you will learn, and I'm going to segue into the objective points that I want to cover. 
And there's three steps to understand, implement, and magnify your why. Five sales steps to help your prospects decide. Five focused action steps to get you out of overwhelm now. And three questions to jumpstart your vision and goals. Now, these pieces that I'm covering here are in a 15-step program called the Balanced Business System. And I mentioned that you're going to be able to receive notes and I'd like to be able to send the notes to the people that want them. So if you want the notes for this presentation and the notes I'm going to be covering briefly here, we don't have time to be able to go through the whole 15-step balance business system. There is a form, and it's sitting at www.leadingadvisor.com forward slash MEFA webinar. It's real straightforward. Just fill in. Your name, the first name, last name, fill in your business phone number and email. And these boxes are already clicked. Yes, I want to receive Simon's Free Balance Plan Reward Newsletter. And yes, I want to receive the 15-step balance business system. And you'll get the notes from this presentation. You will get video. You will also get all of the notes that are covering that I'm covering right now. So three steps to understand and implement, magnify your why. I'm going to cover that on the next slide because it's relevant to the values discovery process that we've been talking about. Five steps to help your prospects decide and understand. Now, this does tie in to the problem with the unmet needs. What is the biggest challenge that salespeople have? Talking too much. Why are they talking too much? Because, frankly, they don't believe they're enough. They don't believe they know enough. They don't believe they're safe enough. They don't believe they're recognized or approved or not. So what we need is a set of questions. And we just need to ask the client, seek first to understand. We start off with question one. Mr. Client or Mr. Prospect, we're meeting today. It could be a review meeting. It could be a brand new prospect meeting. What are the three biggest things that you want to improve upon in relationship to your dreams, your goals in respect to your financial plans going forward, and then be quiet and make notes. The next question is, what are the three biggest challenges that you're facing today? You could say, well, if you're working with the current advisor, what are the three biggest things that you want to improve upon in respect to working with the advisor that you're currently working with? Ask them, what difference will it make if they can make the improvements and eliminate the challenges, ask them, what is it costing them? By that time, if you have the right number of questions, and the white paper I'm going to send you on this is filled with questions so you can seek to understand your prospect or your client, you can say to them, you know, we've spent some time together, and I can help you make these improvements in respect to the challenges that you're facing. We really don't have time today to be able to create a plan going forward. But do I strike you as someone that you could work with to create a plan to be able to grow assets, to be able to protect assets, and to be able to create a legacy? And really the answer is yes or no. You're going to see by body language how congruent the prospect or the client is and you can get an understanding if you're going to be able to work with them right then and there, rather than creating a financial plan and then an investment plan. And you'll get three, into three appointments with the client, and you still haven't asked them if they want to work with you. So this ties to the next part about five focused action steps to get you out of overwhelm now. We've got too much on our minds. Our minds are too full. We've got to have a simple process for emptying the mind. Now, I've got a white paper on this. It is called Emptying Your Mind. And it's very, very simple. What you've got to do is you've got to get quiet at the end of the week. And in fact, the timing of this conversation today, we're coming to the end of October. You've got eight working weeks going forward until the end of the year. You want to redo a review of the month. And you want to look in your journal. You want to look in your Outlook uh, inbox or sent box. You want to look at the files. You want to look at the documents you've created to be able to spur on 
all the things that you've got in your mind to be able to get them down on in one place on a sheet of paper that you would write down in Microsoft Word, preferably as an example. If you're using Dragon Dictation, all the better. Use Dragon Dictation rather than typing it, but you've got to get these things out of your mind. Right now I'm on a 10-day road trip. There's going to be no question that I've got to spend some time emptying my mind because there's information that I'm carrying in my mind. I've got to get that out of my mind. Step two, I'm going to copy and paste that information in Microsoft Excel. Now, again, you're going to get all the notes for this. Step three, the reason why I use Excel is because I can categorize it. So I'm going to categorize it because that line there is related to a client. That line there is related to a blog. That line there is related to a PowerPoint. There, that line there is related to something I'm doing for NAPA, and so on. Then I sort the list. Now I've got it categorized. I guarantee after this 12-day road trip, I'll have, I could have 150 to 200 things that are on that list. And after I categorize it all, I'm going to stand back and realize that there's about four of them that are a priority. When my mind is too full, what happens is my mind turns around and makes it all a priority. Hence, I am in overwhelm, and then where am I? I'm sucked back in to the needs of safety, and it's generating fear and anxiety, and I'm coming from the place that I am not enough, I don't have enough, and what I need to be is I need to be 100% present in front of my clients. They didn't call money currency for nothing. You have got to have extraordinary currency when you're walking in a room with your clients and you cannot be distracted. Your mind has to be empty to be able to have undivided attention to be able to give value to your clients. We can't afford distractions. Now, last thing about this action steps to get out of overwhelm. Guess what you've also just done? You're prioritizing what you love to do as a next step from this list. And then what is left is the list of things that you need to delegate. And if you don't have somebody, then it is time to hire somebody. Three questions to jumpstart your vision and goals going forward for 2014. Look at your business plan from the year of 2013. Ask yourself, what did you accomplish? Next question, what goals did I set and achieve? And the next is what made me happy? And then the next question is what further progress can I make to be able to meet and exceed my goals and my dreams? You've got to set the stage now. And last comment I would make is you've got two months left in your calendar. Block out the time now. Schedule the time now to be able to write your vision and your business plan for 2014. Now is the time. So you come out of the gate January 2nd, clear, focus, you got commitment. Now, I'm taking you back to this value discovery process theory. Unmet needs, as I've been talking about, are not all bad. Again, yeah. They drive negative emotion and negative beliefs. Now, if you notice the, the notion of a need and you take it as a grain of sand that goes into an oyster, after 25 or 30 years, you get a beautiful pearl. You know, I spoke at the MDRT. The presentation was called Breaking Through the Plateauing Out Syndrome. And so the plateauing out syndrome, it's, it's like, you know, I'm at this certain level, but I thought it was going to feel differently. You know, and I kind of just, you've got advisors that have been in the business 25 years, 20 years, 30 years, you know, and they've got, they've got three houses, and they've got, they got three motor homes, and they've got three Harleys, and they've got three vacation homes, and they say, shoot, man, I've got three of everything, but I'm still not happy. Is this all there is? I mean, they've got three new wives, they've got three families. And all that's happened is, is they are unaware that they've got an unmet need, which was the driver of their motivation in the beginning, but then eventually it became their jailer. And it started generating negative beliefs and negative emotions because what started happening is they started comparing themselves. And really, was it them? No, the limbic brain started comparing them to the outside world versus valuing themselves. See, 
there would be judgment over here, there would be understanding over here. So they lost sight of their value and hence the motivation goes away. Now this presentation was originally delivered as the inspirational tipping point, which I did for Ted back in April of this year. And you know what? When I was first asked to speak for Ted, it was in October of 2013, and I got to tell you, I was scared to death. Why? Because I went to Ted's website and I looked at the website, and everybody on it had a PhD and a master's degree, and I do not have a PhD or master's degree. And what happened? I got hooked. I got hooked into my unmet need of worthiness. My unmet need of worthiness is generating a negative belief, the negative emotions. I am not good enough. I'm feeling fearful and anxiety, and I, you know what? I actually laughed. I laughed at myself. I'm not safe. I'm not recognized. Here I teach this. But I realized that I've been in my comfort zone for the last 20 years, speaking with financial advisors. I had not gone out of my comfort zone to stand out there in front of a bunch of PhDs and master's degrees. So no wonder my unmet needs got triggered. So hear this. If you're expanding your comfort zone, you can bet these unmet needs are going to show up and they're going to, they're going to trigger negative emotions and negative beliefs, and it's going to sabotage your values, positive beliefs, and positive feelings. Simple solution. You've got to remember to remember your values. In my case, my values of sense, understanding, and wisdom. They generate positive feelings of certainty, conviction, and confidence. And the belief for me today is by me sharing with what took me 30 years to figure out, I can share it with you in a short period of time and it's going to make a significant impact in respect to your business now and your vision going forward up to 2014 and beyond. We've got to take the responsibility versus being asleep over in the amygdala. Now, how are we going to put this into an objective application? When I work with clients, the first thing I offer them is the values discovery process. And it's a 52-page report. It identifies your strengths, areas to strengthen. It helps you improve communication. It helps you improve your motivation, your leadership, your inspiration going forward. Sales as well. Now, somebody might say, I've done these assessments before. What's unique about this system is it's the only system I've ever seen that will isolate what your values are from your behaviors. Behaviors are how and what to do. Myers, Briggs, Colby, my experience, they tie values and behaviors, they tie it into one report. You cannot see your values separate. And so what we're looking at is the values report running across left to right. First one is theoretical, knowledge and information. The higher the score, the more inclined an advisor would want to have knowledge and information theoretical as a value. The next one is utilitarian, capitalism, return on investment. What am I getting out of my time? It stands to reason that a financial advisor, a successful one, would have utilitarian being their strongest value. Next one's aesthetic. In a financial advisor situation, this old one always scores last. It's appreciation for art, architecture, fashion, design. Next one is social, people. Next one is individualistic, personal power, inner strength. And the last one is traditional. How am I following the rules? Now notice these horizontal lines. These horizontal lines are the national mean. These lines do not depict the scores of what a successful financial advisor or a successful entrepreneur would look like. This benchmark that I'm offering you right here is the benchmark of what a successful advisor looks like. And so, first of all, you've got utilitarian, capitalism, return on investment. Second, theoretical or knowledge. And third, forgive me, I got those two mixed up. Individualistic is second, personal power, inner strength. And then third is theoretical or knowledge. This is what I run into all the time. When I first start working with a client, what they get is an email with a password. They ask a series are asked a series of questions. They're spending about 15 minutes. It produces a 52-page report, which I debrief for them, and this is what we run into. Now let me just flip back and forth. Look at the social value over here, okay? And now look, whoops, 
and now look at it over here. The social value is through the roof. Now you might say, well, we're in a people business. Yes, you are. You are in a people business. You are not in an unmet needs business. This is demonstrating that this advisor has an unmet need of approval and recognition. How is that going to show up in practice? They won't be able to run. They will not be able to manage their time. They will not be able to segment their clients in relationship to giving A-level service to A-level clients and C-level service to C-level clients. They're going to give A-level A -level service to C and D clients. They are going to feel like a victim. They're going to have too much to do. They're going to do way too many favors. They're going to be unfulfilled. Sad to say. It's traditional. When it gets too high, this one's all about following rules. This advisor will not be able to delegate. They will not be able to let go. They've got to remain into control. That's the unmet need that's behind that. And when any of these values get too high, it will trigger unmet needs of approval, safety, perfection, recognition, power, and control, and these things are what sabotage our business. It's not about not having a vision and a business plan and not delegating. We've got to look at the symptoms that are beneath the surface. And it's about understanding why. When I work with a client, I explain their assessment to them, and then they understand, and now we can start looking at the practice management side and start working with the object of things, because when we start working on time management, then it's going to stick. We're not fighting with the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I want to bring you back to this form, www.meetingadvisor.com, make the webinar, you fill in your name, first name, last name, business phone number, email. Yes, I want to receive your content-rich newsletter. I write a content-rich custom newsletter every month. You're going to receive the free 15-step balanced business system. Some of you may want to have a conversation with me. Just check off the box. I'm ready to make changes in my business. My wife, Laura, will call you. We'll schedule a convenient time for us to have a conversation. Now, there's two parts of that form. There's an offer there. It says, yes, I want to purchase the values discovery process complete with a one-hour debriefing call with Simon Riley. It's $197. And so you'll get the password. You'll be able to go online. You'll fill out your report. You'll get a 52-page report. Laura will be on the phone. We'll schedule a time. I will debrief the assessment in its entirety. And I will record it so you've got a link and you'll get detailed notes. I guarantee you'll walk away with understanding your strengths and the areas that you need to strengthen. But notice, there's another offer. I want to purchase the one-page business plan, point-click plan, one-year system. I know that the one-page business plan is a NAPA member benefit. I am a senior certified one-page business plan consultant. So there's two offers. But I want to draw your attention to this offer. It's the event special today. I'm going to give them both to you for the same fee. The values discovery process with the debriefing and the one-page business plan, point-click plan, complete with an email debriefing from me, plus you're going to get one extra call with me in advance to do an orientation. And I want to talk with you. I want to get a deeper understanding about your business. I want to find out about your background. I want to find out what you specialize in. I want to talk to you about what your vision, your plan, and your goals are going forward. I want to talk with you about your strengths. I want to talk with you about your areas to strengthen so that when I debrief the values discovery process, it is going to be absolutely customized. So if you want to go ahead, you go to leadingadvisor.com, you click the event special, you hit submit, it's going to take you to a credit card now. I'm going to make this commitment to you. There's this special. There's these two programs, Value Discovery Process and the One Page Business Plan. You're going to get them both for $197. The first five people that register with their credit card, I'm going to give them 50% of their money back. The other 50% of the money that I'm going to give them back is I'm going to donate 
to a charity called Compassion. Laura and I are going to Ecuador in November, in a couple of weeks, and we're going to see what Compassion is literally doing on the ground. And what Compassion does is they look after children, they provide them with health care, teaching, and they also help to support the homes that they're in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do donate. We're going to give you the first five, okay, they register. We're going to, we're going to give you 50% of your money back, but we're going to take the other 50% and we're going to donate that to Compassion. Now, there is just one qualification level. The advisors, the first five that register, they've got to be in the business for 15 years. And the reason I say that is that advisors that perhaps are in the business less than 15 years, they don't understand that it takes somebody from the outside to be able to help to strengthen themselves. And most of the time, problems can't be fixed in isolation. So quickly, you may know, you may know about the one-page plan. You may not. And so let's quickly go through the one-page plan. It's made up of five components. Answers five questions. Vision, what am I building? Mission, why does the business exist? Objectives, what result am I going to measure in the next 12 months? Strategy, how am I going to build this business? And that is from the next three to five years out. And what am I going to do by quarter? What are my action plans? And that's what makes this system unique. Is it causes you to focus on what are you going to be doing next year? What are you going to be doing three to five years out? But what am I going to do in the next quarter? It's template driven. You get a password protected system. So you will get your own password protected system. It's got point click plan built into it. It's a tutorial to guide you through every step of the way. It's template driven. You can see the template here, causing you to focus within the next three years, grow your company into X number of dollars within a geographic area, focusing you on the type of business and so on. It's going to give you examples of other vision statements of other financial advisors. And this vision here that you're seeing, it was written in 10 minutes. You can draft your own one-page business plan here using this online tutorial in 60 to 90 minutes, and it is finished. And again, now is the time to schedule your time to be able to create your business plan going forward for 2014. Now, we're going to go and show you objectives. Objectives. What am I going to measure within the next year? And so it brings you into inside the system. You've got tabs, financial, customer, process, improvement, learning, and growth. It's template driven. There's a dozen to 15 objectives that you can choose behind every one of these tabs. And you don't have to go it alone. And you can see that the business plan literally starts to write itself. Yes, you've got to populate the numbers. But if you're being tutored, so to speak, to be able to walk you through writing the plan, it is a lot easier. So I come back to why are these results going on? Why is it when I assess this, uh, this group of advisors, we didn't have any real low scoring scores, but boy, we did not have high scoring scores either. And success today, it's not about good to great. It's about good to extraordinary. We have to be extraordinary to be able to help our clients going forward. It takes commitment, consistency, certainty. It takes conviction to be able to do this. And in order to do it, you must know what your values are. And we can't be sabotaged by unmet needs. And I say 90% of success is why, well, I'll go to 90% is a failure. And it's about why not. Why isn't it happening? I bring you to the granddaddy of all unmet needs, worthiness. It drives fear and it generates beliefs. I'm not safe. I'm powerless. I'm spiritless. So bottom line is those unmet needs cause people to basically just go through the motions during the day and they're surviving. You know, there's talk that advisors joining the practice or the business, the new ones are not lasting too 
years. And there's many advisors that are in the business for 15, 20 years, and they're just going through the motions. Going through the motions is boring. And I'm saying we need to get rid of that. You'll create more money. You'll be more focused. You'll have more happiness. You'll have more time. It's about learning to understand yourself. My message to you is there's nothing wrong. There is an absence of understanding. That is it. Once you understand yourself from the inside out, then you can do something about it. And I'm giving you the tools on how to do it. So again, you've got that webinar ad address. You can choose the newsletter and the 15-step balanced business system. Notes for the presentation are going to be included. You might want to talk with me. Hey, your association in NAPA may have an opportunity for me to be able to speak at one of your events. And I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Again, the offer. Go to the address. You'll get the values discovery process. You'll fill out that online assessment. You'll get a 52-page report. You and I will be able to join online and debrief it. But before we even do that, we're going to have a conversation, an orientation call, so I can get a deeper understanding and learn about you, so I can provide you with some sustainable, supporting systems to build a strong foundation in your business going forward. And on top of that, you're also going to get this added value of the one-page plan. You know, I'm, I want to thank Michelle Grassley Clark, the Executive Director from NAPA, Iowa. I spoke on a NAPA, Iowa sales caravan back in November of 2010 alongside of John Nichols, who's the NAPA National President. And we had an extraordinary time along with Matt Anderson. And Michelle said, I personally got so much from his talk, I retained him as my business coach. I'm happy to say that I'm continuing to work with Michelle as her business coach. And I'm also working with Barry Johnson, the president of NAPA, Iowa, as well. One last thing before we get into questions. I would love very much to speak at your event. I've spoken at NAPA, Washington State, South Carolina, Iowa again, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Georgia, and Nebraska, and Boise. And I've spoken at the NAPA National Conference this last year in San Antonio, and I spoke in September of 2011, and I feel fortunate to be a member of NAFA. So I've already said this, but I bring you back to this slide. And when there is no understanding, there is judgment. And when there's judgment, there can be no understanding. When we understand this part about ourselves, and I'm going to say to you, normal, 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 then we can go over to really getting inspired by our values, which are going to drive positive beliefs and positive feelings. And that is going to bring us forward. It's going to give us a strong foundation and be able to build our plan and our vision to be able to go forward into 2014 and into the future. So there's the offer. And Brennan, if you would like, we can open it up. We're just coming on about 7 to the hour. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there's any questions that you have about what we've been talking about here, deepening your understanding of the values discovery process, or I'm happy to answer any questions in relationship to the um, one-page business plan as well. Thank you, Simon. We already do have some questions, and we'll pause a moment to allow other questions to come in. I want to remind everyone participating in the webinar today that if you'd like to ask a question, please type your question into the question box on the right side of your screen. And our first question for Simon, in working with your clients, do you find that in general they tend to misunderstand their skills and abilities by overemphasizing them, underemphasizing them, or are they just just right, just about where they really are in their own estimation. I think that they, I think they underestimate them, and in the process, this is an abstract answer, 
And because they underestimate them, they often talk too much about them, which causes them to overemphasize their skills and abilities, which gets in the way of them asking questions of their clients to seek to first understand. I find this with advisors with 25, 30 years in the, in the business, and they, they already know what they need to know. They need to be present, conscious, and aware, and stop worrying about what they don't know, and ask questions. They may not have all the answers when they're asking their clients questions, they can always get back to them, but they create the space for the client to be heard. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Simon. Uh, the next question is, will this slideshow be available to email afterward? And uh, Simon, I think you mentioned the fact that uh, you had a mechanism by which uh, individual attendees could receive an email with this slideshow afterwards. Is that correct? The, the slideshow is not. The notes are, and there is a video link to the slideshow. So can I give you the hard copy of the slide? No. Can I give you a video, video link to this presentation, which is the presentation I did for TED Talks? Yes. Are you going to get the uh, backup notes uh, that I covered in relationship to the three steps and the five steps, et cetera, yes, that included in the 15-step balanced business system. Yes, yes, and yes. But the actual PowerPoint slides, I can't offer you that. Thank you for understanding. Thank you. And I can also add that we normally do archive the, the actual recorded webinars uh, at www.nafa.org forward slash webinars. Uh, the next question, can you, per, can you post the previous slide once more? Uh, so we're not sure uh, which slide the asker is asking about. So if you wouldn't mind uh, just submitting another question in the same way that you did previously and just give us a little bit more detail in your question about which slide you're looking for, uh, Simon would be happy to put that up for you. The so, next question. Okay. Do you feel the one-page business plan is directed more at financial planners than multi-line insurance businesses? No, I think it can be used for, for multi-line uh, financial planners, advisors that specialize in P&C, um, life insurance, uh, CI specialists. I work with all of them, and we use the business plan for all areas of focus. It requires um, a little bit more uh, uh, work uh, depending upon your specialty, um, but it can be used for all areas, absolutely, all areas. I've done it. I've done it. I've written, I've written 200 financial advisor or insurance advisor or PNC advisor or now, not 200 each. I've written, I can say constantly, I've written 200 business plans for financial advisors. I've done it with working with advisors. It can be used in, in all those different applications, absolutely. Our final question for Simon, what, if any, role does fear play in your business planning? Well, it can be a blessing and a curse. It can cause you to write a plan, but that plan will be based upon fear. It will be based upon lack. It will be based upon scarcity. It certainly can be a motivator to cause you to sit down and write one. But then I think that when fear, and especially unmet needs and negative beliefs are blocking one's values, it causes the advisor to undervalue themselves. And so they will be short-sighted in respect to the 
niche or that the size of the client or the area of specialty that they could work towards or they could just settle. They won't show up in their community, their church or their association. You know, I, I say when a person has unmet needs of recognition and, and, and approval, you know, they've got negative beliefs and negative emotions running and, you know, they'll hurl themselves out there to ask for a referral and I say, and the referral is a pity referral. Pity it, it isn't any good. It's not qualified. So fear can be a blessing, but again, it'll be a jailer. It'll create a glass ceiling and it'll prevent an advisor from going to the next level. But then again, on the flip side, It'll cause an advisor to say, man, I got too much to do. I'm too busy. I can't take the time to go and isolate myself and spend some quiet time away from my family, away from my business, away from my clients, and concentrate and review 2013. What worked? What didn't work? What am I most happiest about? What systems do I need to improve upon? And then what actions do I need to take towards 2014? Fear can be the jailer because one will convince themselves that they've just got too much to do. There's an extraordinary opportunity in this business. And what it takes is advisors that have value at the core of their soul, their being, their DNA, generating positive beliefs and positive feelings going forward. And that is what's going to cause one to write an inspired plan that's going to be uplifting so that they can go forward and make a major difference to themselves, their family, and their clients, to all the people that they serve. I tried that answer. Serve the question. Thank you, Simon, and thanks to all those who participated in today's program. To access today's presentation and other webinar archive resources, please go to W.